Hello, hello and welcome. Welcome once again to another edition of AMB Animation Livestream. This stream is brought to you by AMB Animation and the Real Animator Training Library, the best place to learn hand-drawn animation in the entire world. Even those who first doubted are now believers. If you wish to join this place and forward yourself and train for real and make it real, then join the AMB Animate Real Animator Training Library at ambanimation.com. Just click on the menu Real Animator Training and go and start doing some serious kick-ass animation training there and kick your own ass into gear and start making it real, people. Okay, so with that out the way, that most important announcement, um, what we are going to be doing today is we are going to be breaking down some classic animation. Why? Well, um, many real animator training library members and non-members are uh, piling up together in this amazing community on Facebook called Real Animator Training Growth, Development and Progress. And a particular, I can't help but have some favorites, you know, you say never have your favorite members, but I'm going to be favorites when there are people who are working super hard. So uh, one said Angela Martinez, who is in the stream at the moment, hi there, under the name of Life Fantasy, has requested that I break down this amazing sequence by the master of masters, Mr. Milt Carl, from uh, 101 Dalmatians. This is a crazy, crazy piece of animation. It's going to push me to the limits, breaking this one down. Uh, it is Roger doing a take, uh, a double take, a triple take, a whatever take, you know, and he is um, also exhibiting primary and secondary action. We have Mr. Sinha, Eric Sinha, who has mo almost completed his Don Bluth training, also a library member joining us on there, saying that that uh, is that last pose considered a moving hold no, um, it's slowing out, really. I'm not going to tackle on the last pose, um, uh, Eric. I'm just going to take it to the bit where he gets his finish there, his finished startle look. Otherwise, the stream's just going to go on for too long. But there's so much to learn here. Primarily, I'm going to focus on extremes, pose to pose, but I'm going to work breaking down using a system called straight ahead, which is probably not how he would have animated the hand straight ahead. Um, but he, he, I think he would have roughed it out the way I'm going to break it down, but he would have probably locked it together in a slightly more controlled manner to tie it all together later on. But anyway, let's see how it goes. I can't claim that I know how he did it. I'm just going to break it down in my own way. Um, and then we have uh, what I notice here is if you want to join this group, just go to Facebook. You do not have to be a training library member. This person wants to join. She, Jade Arcade. What an amazing name, Arcades. I used to love arcades. Uh, she wa wants to join. She's not a training library member, but we are going to welcome her in. Welcome, Jade. So that is the approval process. Just behave yourself in this group and go to the announcements. Uh, go to the about and read the group rules uh, and the e ethics of the group if you wish to remain in here and train for real. Okay. So let us now get rid of that and get down to business. Let's say a first few hellos to people. Um, uh, Life Fantasy, Travis, Eric, uh, all library people at the moment. Cartoon, Cal, how are you doing? Uh, I wish I could say that name. Fletcher Burger, I'll say. Hey, how are you doing? Okay. Uh, who's saying hola? I want to say hola. That's Eric. Mr. Sinha is saying Hola. Okay, Bully Bait 88. Good to see you again. And oh, Kitchakat. My friend Kitchakat is online too. Okay, right. Let us get going. Let us get going. We have got a lot to do. Is it one lamp or two? Be our guest. Yes, our guest. That's what we got a lot to do today. So we are going to get through this um, as quickly as I can. Um, 
I'm not going to obviously I'm I'm not going to be able to do it exact uh, because I'm going to just try and burn through these poses as quickly as possible if I'm slightly out so be it uh, we're going to focus more on the animation so what I'm going to do is uh, akin to the master Mr. Milt Master Milt um, he's the master yes he is akin to him um, I'm going to do a silhouette pass uh, to make sure that my um, action works in silhouette and of course by doing that I learn heaps too so what I'm gonna focus on this silhouette is in line with his nose of this first pose is the pipe okay now you're all gonna wanna see it move you're all gonna be well, well, we wanna see the animation but I'm gonna take some time even at the beginning here just to explain the sheer genius uh, that is Milk Call. Some people, particularly anime fans that like to see their bouncing boobs or bulging camel toes in their, uh, you know, juvenile animated cartoons uh, might uh, want to uh, think otherwise. But, you know, when they grow up a little and start studying animation for real, they'll notice that things like silhouette and posing is what matters. And that's what we're going to talk about here. Um, so what we need what we before i continue even with this silhouette i'm just going to outline the sheer geniusness of this look how this this line is in line with his nose almost okay and we just have this kind of kind of shape coming around there like that just kind of unifying even though there's a gap unifying the pipe with the character this is just genius stuff going on there then we have the collar and in line with the collar is the bottom of the guy's hand this is just this has been this has been worked out to perfection i mean milk carl just understood balancing shapes look at that look look at that look at the harmony that exists in there in the silhouette the importance of this stuff is just you know now look at the design of this skull coming back here you know over here and then a nice swooping line that's in line of the hairline with the nose creating more negative space in the shape there this is just you know you can't you can just really learn so much from looking at the silhouette of the character um, so I've got to I must stress that before I move on that it's important particularly if you want to do animation breakdowns and you want to try and get into this business of studying animation properly and not being a fanboy then you need to take your time and know what to look for right so now i am going to move on okay now it could be challenging to pick but if you understand okay uh the the laws the animation laws again a scene like this uh is gonna be it's gonna be quite um it isn't easy to do but it's going to be quite uh uh, simple uh, from a from a from a from a from a professional point of view to know what to look for okay because what I'm looking for is I'm looking for extreme poses okay there are many keys in here there are many breakdowns in here but because of the amount of movement going on in this particular piece of animation okay um, we need to understand the difference between keys and extremes because there's primary action and there's secondary action the primary action of this animation is mainly the, just the, the fact of him doing a take getting startled by the pipe not by the pipe by the dog below but he kind of knocks his pipe out of his hand and then catches it now that can be done in a very boring way of course milk would never do that okay so um instead uh what we have I'm just going to move this up slightly to push that pose a little bit is we have a balance between extreme poses which kind of help us map out where we want to be and key poses which enable secondary action uh, principles such as eye blinks and expression changes and things like that that happen in this particular um, sequence now i'm really making sure that i get this silhouette good in order to understand what's happening here so it's it's just vitally important we do that so 
this is where the real um, study is for me I'm not really I will for the sake of the stream okay um, make it draw it in and make it all pretty and nice and you can see the 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 subtleties of facial expression and all that but for me as an animator uh, doing these breakdowns is something I regularly do for myself uh, to keep myself uh, on high in standard uh, to keep your standards high doing something like this is like doing press ups or something like that keeping your animation muscle going always learn from your betters and milk Carl who better than milk Carl to learn from okay so he has left us a wealth of work to study and learn from even after he isn't here to show us how it is done okay right so there we have um our first extreme pose where he's coming in we will we'll elaborate on that later on when we start to draw that in so i'm going to look for the next extreme which is like this so i'm just going to study the movement okay so now his shoulders are coming up and it's interesting because as I look at this, there's so many, um, because this animation was done using the Xerox, the rough technique where cleanup and uh, all of the inking and cleanup was kind of cut as thrown to one side and they would just kind of tie down the drawings and then uh, photocopy them onto the clear cell acetate. Uh, so there's a lot of wobbly lines in here, a lot of... Uh, dare I say even dodgy arcs that aren't quite refined but you're going to notice that it really you know it really doesn't matter so much when you're when when the laws of animation are working well you don't really like I mean who really pays attention to that okay but that doesn't mean uh, when you're looking at a scene like this you don't really pay attention to that because it's just genius but that doesn't mean that you have cause to neglect those laws um, Milk Hall just is a master he knows what he's doing he knows what works he understands what we're looking at as I did a series in the secret science of shape simplification we're looking at master shape moving so all of the little little other in inconsistencies just are kind of forgivable um, and arguably it adds more life to the style I mean they even went on, you got to think art direction wise, they wanted it to look like newspaper cartoon strips or something like that. So the background art was offset to match the, the sort of rougher line. Uh, so it all kind of sits together nicely and it works like a charm, as you saw in that small little snippet at the beginning when I showed you in the group what the person requested. I do okay so now we're going to start seeing what's going on I'm not going to focus we're going to look at the pipe but obviously the pipe is kind of off screen in some of these so I've got to kind of make it up a little bit but I'm not so concerned about what's happening with the hands I'll be very honest with you as I'm breaking this thing down my personal let's just see the shoulders have come up squash and stretch in the neck shoulders are still going up and head is coming down so shoulders are still going up and head is coming right the shoulders are up at this point okay right so this is an extreme in the shoulders area okay so um my guess is that um the amount of bounces in the head um my guess is is when this animation was being done it was kind of obviously you're thinking about one thing and then the other thing he's probably said okay I'm gonna put a, a bounce on his head and I'm gonna put a nice circular motion on his on his hands and I think he might have I mean he may not have him being the genius he is but my belief is is he might have uh, gone about and um, done the done the head first and then gone and undone the hands he might not have i mean as i said i i cannot guarantee that that's how he did it i wasn't there i i would have loved to have been there and learned from him but um my personal thing is as i would have kind of roughed out a loose idea of what i wanted for the hands and then i would have uh gone in there and really played with the arc and 
and Ma got it finesse and nice uh, the way he would have done. Um, but then that said, I'm not him and I don't have his experience or his his uh, his knowledge or, or mastery. Uh, so he might have just done it straight. What I would have immediately said is, is this head is a series of bouncing balls. OK, this head is just a series of bouncing balls and he would have had the head go, OK, the guy is basically when you do one take, you just do one bouncing ball for the head. But he would have gone on and he would have gone and done a whole load of little bouncing balls as he was about as he was going through the process and said, OK, well, how can I complement those bouncing balls? I can, I can have the hand doing this nice circular motion here, uh, which is what I'm focusing on here. So if we look at this, let's see how this is coming on stream. We can see what's happening already. Um, let me just preview my screen stream so I know so you can, that you can see the red shapes that I'm making. OK, that's good. You guys can see that. Let's see what's going on in the comments. I was never a big fan of Xeroxing. Inking the lines was much higher quality. Yeah, I guess so. But then I guess it's down to that. I mean, even Don Bluth. When It's funny because as I'm looking at this particular scene of Roger Hare, this is I'm, I'm finding it a lot uh, simpler to draw than I thought initially, purely because uh, me being a big Bluth devotee, Bluth was my absolute idol when I was a kid. And I studied his drawing of Dirk the Daring to no end. And of course, these shapes are all Bluth being the understudy of Mr. Milk. These shapes are all Bluth shapes, to my knowledge. I mean, they're Milk shapes. I mean, they came from Milk first. But so I'm really starting to see these amazing silhouettes, uh, like the triangle in the in the hand. Look, that all that that's almost like A for A and B. Look, there you go, the triangle in the hand uh, coming there. It's just making it a whole lot simpler for me to. To study that. So now let us continue with our extreme analysis. So his shoulders have come up and his head goes back and down. So this is a slow in extreme. You see, I wouldn't. I would have. I would have called this the extreme and not the other one. But I, this is where I'm getting a little bit uh, straighty heady uh, because I don't want to get lost. So we're going to put a little bit of a slow in. That head is continuing to go down. Um, and the shoulders are going back so there's a little bit of squash and stretching going on in there which we can talk about later on right so this is coming here like this and coming back right and this one is coming up like this and what I what I think will be a great thing to see um, as I start drawing in this a little bit more is is the cheating uh, and the law of exaggeration of anatomy okay so again just because Milt is pushing the anatomy and and forcing the squash and stretch in his neck and almost creating telescopic style ET movements in the character's neck it doesn't mean that like he's you know, you can go away and say, well, Milt Carl didn't didn't really get it all an an anatomically correct. And, you know, that means that uh, that means I don't have to study anatomy. No, that's all BS. Uh, in order to to utilize the law of exaggeration and the law of appeal, you must understand fully what it is you are um, attempting to exaggerate and attempting to inject appeal into. It is just sheer laziness and foolishness to, to 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 try and do otherwise and it is just as i often say burying dirt under the rug now we see um the how these hands are coming together to make this lovely triangle shape you can even see there's a bit of inconsistency what's happening here is the shoulder is up here and this is here but it doesn't matter which we're just going to kind of keep it in like that this is not fault finding in the master's work. This is just the fact that this was rough and a rougher style of animation that was not cle really cleaned up to the full. And, you know, to some I can see in the chat they preferred the more cleaned up stuff. As did as I was talking about Bluth before I varied on. That's why he walked out of the studio. He didn't like all of the 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 carelessness, the, you know, the, the, the move away from all that refined stuff. Um, Right, so now the next extreme we're going to be coming up. 
I think I'm gonna just straight ahead in and out of this so I'm gonna I'm gonna go and do these keys a little bit because this little head arc is important so this is coming up here we don't want to miss anything see I would have just if I wanted to I would have just gone from extreme to extreme and missed these particular key breakdowns out and they might have it might have meant that I would have missed something from the animation so let's just see what's happening in those shoulders again um, okay they're just continuing back in a straight line they're just continuing back in a straight like that nothing really moves in a straight line but in terms of the arc okay so if it's arcing like this when we're along this part of the arc it might seem straight okay so don't perhaps interpret the things I say uh, that literally right so now this hand is the way I'm gonna find myself or of course is to think about the distance of the hand between the characters nose okay and of course silhouette is so important which is why this is where I'm actually really the real drawing as I'm making a study from this is the drawing is this okay because this is where the real animation is going on so um, those of you who followed uh, real animated training library people or who were fortunate enough to catch the streams that I did on the secret science of shape simplification will know and understand um, what I say about the master shape okay the master shape um, this is what we are doing with the silhouette the master shape is how we're managing going to be managing everything in this and making it all work okay now that pipe is coming here like this so of course the pipe might have been animated afterwards as well not all at once but with milk you never know with the silhouette uh, so look at the look at how the pipe is going here and this is going here I'll talk more about that as we as we move on and start to draw it in and beef it up so we can analyze these things happening but we can see what's already happening from the silhouette okay uh, let us move on it'll be interesting to see I can't how we're doing for time 22 minutes in mm -hmm. and let us move now now there's a significant change let's move to this extreme so the head is coming up at an angle and the shoulders are coming down on themselves let's just understand that and it's interesting how the pipe is echoing the head okay right so let's go on there and think about this so this is going to be angling up the head is angling up the hair is angling up so this will be moving like this back on itself so there's not much of a movement there Perhaps it has moved up a little bit more. As I said, I'm not going to be, I'm far from, you know, I'm trying to do this within an hour or maybe maximum two because of the nature of the work. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to do this um, quickly and I'm trying to talk about this the first time I'm studying this animation and I'm trying to talk about it and, and teach at the same time. So it's a, it's a given that I'm going to miss a few things especially from such a nice piece of work but um, we're gonna get the idea so this head is coming here like this and this hand has moved on around here it's amazing how much how quickly those hands are moving and I'm not looking whether they're on ones or twos at the moment I've got a feeling it's on ones okay uh, those who don't know the difference between ones and twos ones is basically we are drawing exactly every drawing is moving at 24 frames per second twos is when we double expose the drawing so you know that one drawing is held for two frames meaning that that drawing is um is could be interpreted as around 12 frames per second but when you mix and match the exposure um, that's why you never work you never in today's world of software work with uh, just 12 frames per second as your setting because you want to have the mix and match effect to give you those 
the flexibility to have far more weight and richness to your timing okay so this shape this a shape is moving here like this right now we need to look at the pipe now the pipe is coming on top of the thumb and through here like this and interesting how the pipe the head is this way and the pipe is this way and the head is this way and the pipe is almost that way too so that's interesting opposing actions going on there right uh, i feel like we're coming almost to the end of the section let's look at the extreme oh another slight little bounce let's yeah oh wow there's there's another one okay so this is the other extreme so what happens here his eyes super open and his head levels up and his shoulders come up and back right okay so his shoulders will come up and back and his head will level up okay so that's the the takeaway from this this is always you know this is the difficult part of doing straight ahead kind of key um studies like that you really need to understand arcing if you want this to work for you um because if you just draw what you see and you copy these poses without um without actually understanding arcing and uh, also the extremes and where where the path of the arc is going uh, then you're very likely going to get a very very bumpy wobbly kind of recreation of what it is you're trying to do so that's the most important thing i can say is is you know this is a very good exercise that i encourage for all uh, serious animation students to pick a piece of animation that is technically great that you like okay don't just say that you like some Ricky and Morty so you're gonna break it down and study it you know um, you really you might as well go to a five-year-old's um, textbook and go and try and learn something from that it might even prove to be more valuable and spark your imagination a bit more than what those guys are doing which is absolutely nothing but shit okay right so uh, you need to make sure that you are studying from something that is technically outstanding if you want to benefit now we're looking at these hands look at the shape of these hands as the two of them are kind of combined together like that that's just amazing and we've even got an indication of, of the carpal bones in here which goes back to what I was saying about informed anatomy even if you're going to gonna change things a little bit it's just um so nice look at the way this this arc of the hand is moving forwards and backwards like that that's just really great okay so the sleeve is coming here and the pipe is almost leveling up in there like this in line with his nose almost so you see that that is just genius the pipe is almost leveling up with his eye line like that so i don't know if you can quite make that out let's just have a look there's more to do but let's just have a look we've got one one two three four five six seven eight drawings eight drawings and we're already just through the extremes we're already getting a feel for that um animation playing out there the, the the head bouncing with the with the follow-through on the hair and all that you're already getting that you see in the master shape the silhouette the master shape we're already getting so much nice information from there okay let's move on now let's go and see another um another uh effect in there Okay, so the next extreme is the head will come up and the hand will go out like that. Then we'll come in and down and settle to the slow in there like that. Okay, so we're here. Now we're here like that. That's the next extreme. Okay, so let's just see what's going on in the chat here. 
Uh, wow, this is so neat to watch. I love the pipe spinning around in the hands. My pleasure. Um, Bluth always says, don't cheat and spend spend the pencil mileage to make it right. See, Eric is straight from the Bluth course. So let's listen to what he says about Bluth because he's had direct contact with the man. Okay, so that is absolutely brilliant, Eric. Thank you for sharing that with us. Right now, we are going to move on to the next um, particular scene. Now, I think I may have drawn the pipe on the wrong layer, so we are going to we are going to edit, cut that, and edit, paste that there. Let's quickly save in case I close my program by accident. Okay, right. So let me now, as I'm doing that, I forgot the path of motion. So. The all that's happening is the shoulders are coming down and the head is coming up and the hand is coming down with it. Okay, so this is coming down. So here you'll see me kind of mapping out my arcs. The head is coming up and the shoulders are coming down. So that's what's happening. Okay, so there's a subtle movement here, subtle kind of settle action going on here. The head is coming up and we're moving here like this. So this is exactly why I share the things I do um, in regard to the library and I teach the way I teach is because what I like to illustrate when I do these breakdowns is basically ultimately all of the fundamentals of these 12 laws that we learn um, are exhibited in these seemingly complex pieces of work. But when we really look and understand at the bottom, what's at the bottom of it all, be behind all the complexity and the appeal and the exaggeration, which, which are those laws used to mask all of the other things, all of the other fundamental laws, that it really is just bouncing balls and swinging pendulums and, you know, just arcs, interesting arcs like... For example, this pipe moving in in the library, I have a uh, I have an exercise on the complete pendulum spin. Okay, where the pendulum you once you learn how to weight your pendulum with a, a series of basic swings, um, you then learn how to make the pendulum swing and spin around and at various different speeds and even use a bit of motion blur or smear or whatever you call it kind of frames in there to get that effect and as I study this piece of animation however outstanding it is and whatever I just immediately think well look this is all just fundamentals these hands spinning around like that are just similar to this pendulum that spins around uh, in these complete pendulum spin exercise in the uh, real animator training library now i'm not for a second claiming that being able to do that will immediately make you a genius like milk carl because there's a lot of anatomical study a lot of anatomical understanding a lot of understanding of acting personality character appeal um, just mastery of animation but uh, uh, sitting beneath the mastery is complete and total understanding of fundamentals okay and it's the fundamentals so as we settle up sorry just break off as the head settles down and we settle into that final i'm just going to end it here i don't want to go into the into the other pose um so this just shoulders come up okay so getting back to that so the mastery of all of the stuff to do all that stuff to to really create the illusion of life which is what this is all about, okay, is, is ultimately rests on your understanding of the fundamentals and your mastery of the 12 um, laws of animation, which is exactly why I like doing these breakdown videos to educate the young about animation that they perhaps have not seen or it may be even if they've seen it they are um, in ignorance dismissing it or disregarding it because they are not so keen on the visual aesthetic 
okay and you know so it's my job uh, as somebody hoping to enlighten inspire and share uh, real knowledge in uh, mastery of the craft of animation to bring it to the attention of these youngsters or even misguided elders who uh, perhaps are now giving their dream a second chance uh, due to midlife crisis or whatever reason where they're kind of sick of tired of uh, of the job they have and they want to chase out their lost passions um, and they were perhaps into Marvel comics or stuff like that and they probably disregarded this aesthetic it is my job to say you can like what you like but this is the best example this is the co most complete example of mastery that there is and it, it, you would do well to understand these things if you want to excel at whatever aesthetic you wish to convey right so that is where I'm going to take it. I'm not going to take it any further than that because um, if we look at the clock, um, we are 36 minutes in. So um, so we're going to now uh, look at the silhouette shape that we have. Okay, so we have this action going on. Now bear in mind that with the exception of a few of these drawings, these are all ex what I have identified to be extremes. But we can see that the uh, the action is taking place, okay? Exactly almost as you saw it before. You can see the um that even if we were to test this, we would have to time it out. Okay, I'm just dragging it along. But if we are, if I was flipping the paper in my hands and holding it like a flip book as Milt would have done, I would be smiling in glee thinking what an amazing scene. Whatever I do, even if it doesn't turn out as good as I'm planning it to turn out, it's going to look great because this silhouette looks great. Okay, we can see that we've got all the actions going on there. And now I can only just build on it and improve it with the character's expression and facial features and things like that. Um, so let's see what people are saying in the chat before I move on, make this a bit in interactive. Uh, for my thesis, I need to make animated images and short movies to apply in my game. Amazing. Um, but Eric, I'm looking for a user-friendly tool app which can make my product much easier. It's somehow tricky. Well, perhaps somebody in the chat can help him. Um, apps and tools are not really what I'm about. I'm about the the master tool, which is your brain and your, um, your ability. Um, everything else comes afterwards of course if you're working on games your app and tool is very important about to drop money on the basic animation stuff i'm still worried i'm d too dumb to learn i love the stuff so much dude that's me the old man hey oh i'll tell you what okay if, before you drop any money on that okay um let me just say to you to go here okay go to this free place for you okay um let's go to facebook right now if you want free if you before you want before if you're thinking you're too dumb you'll find out that you're no no you're not don't run yourself down like that but in this free group real animator growth development and progress okay you have nine free training library exercises okay you got uh you have um three from the basics archive you've got the basic bouncing ball the basic pendulum spin and the basic walk cycle part one so just the legs okay not how to time the legs or anything just you've then got some of the anatomy and some of the other like you've got nine free videos you got a sample from all of the archives but you got three from the basics there and i'll tell you what why don't you just go in you can see people in here they're all posting their work from these basic exercises some people are sharing stuff from CG. So a lot of these are uh, is efforts by non-members. So you see Charlene's a non-member, but she's working that basic pendulum spin. Fictivus is a non-member. He's working the basic ball bounce. This guy is a non-member. He's working from my free AMB uh, tutorials on YouTube. Um, Kitcha Cat's a non-member. She's working on that free basic leg test. So you see there's so much... Uh, 
chance for you to give it a taste okay the last thing i want is for people to invest in something that um that they find they're going to struggle with so give it a taste just go to facebook there check it out see if it's for you if you're serious it's for you okay plain and simple if you're a dabbler and you just want to watch your game of thrones mix it up with your gaming do a bit of cosplay go out watch the movies go to a party then real animator training ain't for you How, what does gal say in street fighter go home and go home and be a family man okay nothing wrong with being a family man it doesn't quite work for real animator training but go home and be a be a gamer go home and be a cosplayer go home and be a be an, a back to back um, big bang theory guy don't uh, invest in real animator training um, so that's basically that for you so if you can see as i say if you want to make it real you got to get real with yourself first and then you got to start training for real and the library is where you start training for real so get real first train for real then then you'll make it real right back to the 101 dalmatians breakdown so as we see we have got the um the rough silhouette action working so now what i'm going to do is, is i'm going to go on top of here and i'm going to introduce bitmap layers uh, and i'm going to go and i'm going to start um drawing roger on top um so that's what i'm going to do and as i do so i'm going to have to make his um the uh under red drawing a little bit uh fainter i'm choosing to go in bitmap just to make my as i'm lines a little bit i've got a bit more pressure sensitivity leeway um, and i can spend a little bit of time on the drawing making it a little nicer all right so let's go and let's go right back to frame one uh, so just bear with me somebody has uploaded this scene on youtube and with youtube i'm able to go backwards and forwards so that is where i'm using my breakdown all from the tube right so um let me go here and let me just select that and gray that out like that there we go and i'll gray this one out. i'll gray them out as i do them it saves time right so now i'm gonna go in and i'm gonna draw the roger model on top let me just find a nice brush size oopsie um we want our brush size in the bitmap to be about 20 how's that okay how's the pressure okay let's bring the opacity down just a little bit okay a little bit more how's 48 yeah that's nice okay right so let's let's go and just work this in okay so i'm not gonna spend too long but i'm gonna have eye lines and things like that so i can just figure this out he's got slightly more than one eye width between his eyes so this is the first time I'm drawing uh, Roger. I, I, I don't haven't actually made many studies from Milt Carl's Roger. I must admit I'm a big Merlin fan, a big fan of Sir Hector, big fan of the Sheriff of Nottingham, Friar Tuck, King Louis, those characters. Um, Roger is equally amazing, and you know there's some amazing animation in there, but um, never really got round to studying. Uh, 101 Dalmatians so thank you to Life Fantasy for suggesting this one for me right so now the way to give some dimension to the face is on the eye okay we're just gonna curl that there and that's where we get the nose silhouette coming in here okay and then in there we're gonna have the other nose sitting here you'll have to forgive me slightly as as I need to speed through this I'm not going to be talking too much about characters construction I kind of as I said once Andreas Deja said while having lunch with my brother uh, and I was so envious I never got to be there at the time but he did sign my art of Lilo and Stitch book for me with a nice little drawing of Lilo um, he said construction is for the beginner at the time I never understood it but now as I've um, improved and up my game as an animator um, I can say I truly understand it as you get to the more super league um, elite level 
it really does become you know more about just understanding shape uh, but the construction is a is a very important part of learning okay so in line in here we have the 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 ear the jaw the mandible section which comes here and then we have the other the hairline is where all in line with this nose so you see that's how I'm kind of finding my way I'm not going to be perfect with this but obviously I'm going to speed up as I start familiarizing myself with this character so through hair and through hair is where we're going to have the hairline a nice little crease on his head there and it's going to sit nicely there what I love about this design is just pure swooping line so that comes into where the partition of the head is and we're just going to make a shape like this underneath there like that then on here is where the back back of the hair is going to be it's just so much appeal you see how the you know the line and the uh kind of creates a separation but you can kind of cut off his head and that's how all these little shapes happen that's why i really love also not just don bluth's work i love john pomeroy's work as well uh, because it really does uh, is based around these um these just these graphic shapes okay uh graphic shapes which is where it all comes from so the neck is going to sit here and this is going to come in here like this now i'm going to come out a little bit and we're going to focus on the color okay so the color sits in here and if i see any irregularities with my silhouette i don't really care about that i'm just going to go in and try to make it all match up so here the back of the color would have been more hair so my silhouette is out slightly and this all must sit into this kind of imaginary line that we're going to put there like that okay and then this is going to continue so okay we can't see that but i'm just sharing that with you so this is a continuation to keep the consistency in there through there like that and we're going to come in here and bring this out and bring this down and through here like that okay well, we're going to come and bring this in so that that is kind of like our uh roger head okay uh and now we're going to we could go onto the fingers and the hands and i think i will do that rather than the pipe so what is important here is the way this uh finger sh shape kind of comes out like this and then there's a curling line to really balance it you see that that really shows a good understanding of curves against straights which is how this drawing style is all about then the knuckle comes out there like that and then we create room for the other knuckle and rather than just drawing it straight like a samurai jack naivete we put a little kind of curl there to balance this nice negative space in there to create a kind of stretch on the skin okay squash and stretch isn't just about your animation squash and stretch is also about your drawing okay this is why i make those mockeries of those uh free transform people who just think they can just teach you bouncing balls with squash and stretch by just pulling about the free transform tool of the bouncing ball uh with the free transform and they make such light of the law of squash and stretch that it is just an embarrassment to watch and that's why i mock them because they have they have been the birth of a lot of careless bad habits uh, and unfortunately a lot of passionate people who have um, followed them through their own fault for being cheapskates by following inexperienced people and saying they don't want to pay for their knowledge okay they have gone and um, and followed them and now they've got a bad habit that they've had to spend some time undoing because as they join my library they learn first they learn the bouncing ball with no squash and stretch okay then they have to learn to put squash and stretch in there afterwards one thing at one time and it's so funny seeing some ignorant comments from non-members in that group saying your ball is lacking squash and stretch they don't of course know the the kind of exercises they're following and you know it is just it's kind of laughable but sad at the same time that these people have you know they just want to rush through it okay so that's kind of like my first um 
go at Roger there. There's a few things wrong, but I don't care. I'm just going to continue through. Otherwise, we're going to be here forever, and I'm going to speed through uh, the drawing as we go on through that. Dun, dun, dun. Right. Um, let's move up here like this. Right. Now we're going to come in and talking of squash and stretch, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to have so much fun. As this hand is hitting the nose, okay, I'm going to come in. Now I'm going to be fast, okay. I've familiarized myself with the character. And now I'm going to be super fast as I start to draw what I see. Okay, so as this hand comes up, I'll talk about it when I heavy it in. Okay, so just let me rough this in. Uh, because I want to speed up and then I'll talk about things as I heavy it in. Okay, so this is going to come up there like that. Lovely stuff. Lovely stuff. Then we have the partition in the hair, which is going to come up there like this. The shape. So I need to see, as I'm flipping and rolling this, if I want this to animate, I need to see the shape of the back of the head, the shape, what's happening there. And this shape, the triangle there. So we've got more of a forehead, the ear. So I want to keep an eye on the arc of the ear here. So as I'm as I'm concentrating doing this, um, I'm also sharing with you what's going on in my brain. So I'm just literally keeping an eye on the pivot points. Okay, so now we've got a, a action here. The chin is going to be around here like this. And the hand the hair is coming through here like this and I'm just going to put, put those lines in there I'm not going to spend too much time on the details of the hair and things like that what I am going to do is talk you through the process of squash and stretch and the anatomy here so we can really see this and this is what I love about uh, what I see what Bluth learned from Don is the is the simplification of anatomy to the point where sometimes you just your your character just completely breaks the rules but then it, it, it pops back in. So now we've got this telescopic neck coming out of that collar, which is absolutely fine because it's just for this one frame. And, you know, then, then we're going to go in, you know, just like it's that's what squash and stretch is all about. So even when we've got like a super anatomical character based in reality where they did have um, particularly on Mark Davis's scenes, I think more so than Milk Carl, because Milk Carl used to moan about it a lot. Um, uh, is the they did shoot live action reference to help them understand the movements, um, but um, the it's just foolishness to say uh, a lot of people try to downplay the genius of these guys and say that they they were rotoscoping and all that, but uh, this will show you otherwise that this is the 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 law of exaggeration really knowing your thing in order to build on it and put the squash and stretch in there let's just turn off the under layer so i can come in here as i as i beef this drawing up i'm just roughing it in i will explain to you the the, the laws and the things that i see happening okay so this hand is going to come somewhat here like this so obviously with these breakdowns okay this isn't you know this is not real animated training because I'm just kind of giving you a demo and trying to share with you what I am seeing as I'm breaking down these animations so I can't give you a step-by-step -step instruction on something like this um, but what I can do is is share with you the things that I'm doing and understand what I see as I'm making these breakdown drawings. Okay, so this finger is coming here like this. We're almost there. We're almost there with this to see the squash and stretch happening. Uh, this hand I can just explain to you now. It's just, it's just a straight line and with the body of it is the square here. And we're just going to taper that out a little like that. And we have this. We don't want to lose that. Um, so as we make this straight line here, what we can see is we can see this fan like shape happening here. And from here, I'm just going to fit my fingers in. Okay. So my fingers are going to kind of sit in there like that. And they're going to fan out at the top. So at the bottom, 
the phalanges are joined okay so that's why I made this square shape here okay and then it's at the top this set of phalanges where we're kind of separating them out and creating the illusion of dimension okay just like this okay like this and then here the other thumb is going to sit and we're going to layer and put it behind there and voila we have a hand okay which isn't the best but I am going to refine it as we move on okay so this is going to come here the pipe and there's all kinds of effects animation going on here with the smoke and the pipe uh, all of that and the ashes and all that but I'm not going to focus on that right let's look at the squash and stretch happening in this particular drawing okay so the hand is coming up okay and the shape of the back of the hand is pressing against the character's nose okay so we want to emphasize that now this is just the easy stuff the hand is all following these shapes so let's just put that through like that and on the other side i'm just getting this hand out the way so i can talk on the on the juicy stuff okay so we're going to angle this thumb down and we're going to add a little kind of crease there to give it a little bit of anatomical information to hide the shapes and we're going to put the um, abductor and opponent of the little finger in there right now let's get on to the nose so it's making a collision with the nose now look at the shape of what's happening to the nose so the straight line of the nose is now getting curled and it's almost like a bouncing ball kind of effect the nostril is there on top of it like there and we immediately have the the folding and the buckling in the skin above it like this okay coming like this and this one we have the eyes which are closing so the eye although the head is is coming higher it's like the eye line is is not moving much because it's kind of it's fighting okay and then we have the fighting the direction we have the eyebrows coming down okay to really really give it that squashed feel so the eyebrows have come down okay and we've kind of changed shape in the eyebrows we've gotten more meat to the eyebrows so the head is angling back so you see now we're adding all these creases and lines on his face and the head is angling back we're really seeing that and then we're getting some um, I think this I will call um, overlap in the hair okay as it's coming down with that action there and if we look at those swooping lines of the hair that's where we're going to keep that the ear i'm going to leave as is i can't really not going to talk too much about that let's just bring the the arm up so here we're cheating kind of cheating anatomy a little bit okay but what we're doing is we're having this sleeve coming in here okay and we're having this kind of shape but we're we're fudging the elbow a bit okay because we want to introduce the hand in so we're having this curling shape here and we're fudging the elbow a bit okay because what milt wants to do is he wants to really put really have this drawing just come in and push the silhouette so we're not even bulging the shoulders out we're not trying to you see if this was me i would have said oh that's an anatomically wrong let's try and bulge the shoulders out but there's it some we want to really push the shoulders on the next pose so what milt's deliberately doing it's not like he doesn't know that shoulders and uh, and elbows don't do that it's it's now he's putting in his his pure exaggeration uh animator's brain on which is way more uh daring and more uh experienced to know what he can how he can play with anatomy than mine so whereas he, i would have decided to do that what i am learning and seeing why by his choice is that i can get a much more appealing uh timing with this realistic more re character based more in realism um if i if and i it's okay it doesn't really look it doesn't look wrong you can do it and it actually helps it but you got to know when to do it and how to do it as i said so you need to know those anatomy things first in order to know how you're going to change it and cheat it and whatever 
Right, the pipe, I don't really think I'm going to bother really drawing in so much. It's, it's, it's not really my priority. So here we have that happening on with this also, the telescopic neck. Okay, so we had this kind of thicker neck here, but now where, where it was there, the telescopic neck really coming in. So let's go into the next pose and see what we can ascertain from that. Okay, um, let's see how we're doing. Let's see what's going on in the check. How the process after drawn in Toon Boom storyboard like this for final animation. Uh, if you just clean it up and you just clean up your lines and you just draw it, you, you draw it in. Okay, but what can I say? Um, you just literally clean it up. That's like paper. Okay, let's move away from the software. That's not important. Um, it, basically, for anybody wanting to know about how to do final animation and you don't know how to do a simple basic bouncing ball, I'm sorry to say this to me I take you as seriously as five-year-olds playing cops and robbers in the playground okay finished full color stuff when you don't when you're not a professional or you don't know how to do it it's just like you know like for me it's like a little kid who's just watched I don't know how to train your dragon and he wants to draw how to train your dragon now that's great he's been creative he wants to draw and learn how to train your dragon and he wants to he might move on to become a great animator in his future life and that was the birth of his drawing passions but it's a little too early to to talk you know the, my training is for a people who are a little bit more um, older and wanting to take their animation further and they have to understand a few things so um, I would I, I would I would encourage the five-year-old to keep copying and drawing um, I would tell him not to color in his work even at that stage um, so yeah finish full color all that then I'll tell you what if you want to do that then hand-drawn animation isn't for you um, and you probably are better bet doing the rigged cutout stuff how's that okay see um, rigged cutout stuff has its place okay it's for the people who want uh, results finished looking results quick okay we won't talk about the quality of those results okay so this um this head is coming up and back like that and we're being straight out there with a closed eye so i'm keeping the eyes closed now there are many keyframes in 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 here where his eyes are open and i might have to go in there and do them in shorthand uh, because at the moment, because um, depending on how long this takes for me to get through these frames, okay? So the head is coming up and back. We're stretching the nostril shape out. So the curve, the reverse curve in the nose, notice how the nose is straight, then we curve this way, and now it's reversed curve in the nose there, up there. So we're having this head arc air. The foremouth, the bottom lip is coming like this now what I'm going to do here to keep everything in as we're changing the angle of the head is I am going to make sure that my ear is all fully lining up here so we're going to have a look at the ear is that ear arcing this is how we find our pivot points to make sure that we have some consistency in the movement now this is a nice kind of silhouette shape of the character so I'm gonna this is what I've learned about this model is, is this half of the head comes down like this and we go in there and we add the back piece okay and that's how his head is tilting and we're getting the nice change up in the angle of the head there now we're going to put the um, follow through okay or the drag or delay on his hair okay we're gonna put that in there like that and have this come over and around on here like this and move this through okay so let's have a look so we see the effect of that the bounce the effect of the contact of the nose okay so again again if you want to think of everything also like walk cycles you've got your contact you're up okay 
um, you're down and all that so this is kind of happening on the on the hands as well if you think about it like this hand hitting his face is like a bouncing ball hitting the ceiling so the bouncing balls hit the ceiling now it's bouncing away okay so again it's really talking about those um, those fundamental principles so now I'm gonna really really stretch this neck even more okay and we're gonna see the the collar coming in here let's just flip back to that yeah that kind of works back to that first I shouldn't really be trying to focus on consistency and everything um, I'm just gonna get the meat and potatoes I already know that whatever I do even if I mess it up slightly because I focused on the silhouette shape and got most of the silhouette shape kind of intact it's gonna look kind of nice no matter what now and that's what you need to remember about the whole process of this okay so now here's where we're talking about where we're moving the mass so now the shoulders have completely come up here like this and we're coming in here and we're gonna get the buckling of the shirt and a little bit of the underline there so we're completely now putting the character back in terms of his shoulder anatomy and everything is coming back to where it should be and this is where the uh the sleeve is going to come down there like this and now the hand is going to lower and become less uh, prominent in there so we have this effect okay so now we're going to look at the distance this has moved and the in order to get the hand i'm going to get the middle finger and i'm going to join it right onto here like this okay and then this is the thing where you're going to understand where we're going to break up and this finger is going to come off there like this okay out like that and then here is where there's going to be some breakup okay so we're going to have this finger on top but then we're just going to break up the space now i'm working fast so i'm making my fingers a little fatter i don't want to spend too much time um accurately representing the drawing uh what i have is accurate enough it's giving you enough information um i need to keep this moving so here we've got some uh some metacarpal heads knuckles okay coming there to give us a nice feel and the hand is is a you remember when i did the peacock tail uh the peacock claw opening up in that run cycle in science of shape simplification the hand is nice and big on this frame really because we want to see its introduction okay like that so it really helps it now what what we want to look at is this beautiful uh, balance of negative space in the science of sh shape simplification coming here so we have the thumb coming here like this so this is really going to give you a, a food for thought whenever you do your animation posing okay so this is now where i'm going to make this line here to, that determines where my first finger is going to be and then the rest are going to kind of sit in there and kind of help me uh determine and understand where the rest of them are okay so this one is going to be here this one is going to be somewhat hair like this and then this one is going to be next to it like that okay, there we go so these hands are really opening up and uh, letting us helping us see that some more exaggeration going on there i must stress his fingers are not as fat as mine okay they're nice and thin and spindly like the character but i'm just getting on with the task in hand we have far too much to do for me to be too fiddly about little details like that okay the pipe has now reversed its angle so we're looking at this shape here so this shape has gone all the way up here so just like i talked about how the basic pendulum spin which is the final exercise on pendulums that you do in the real animator training library you know you really when you want to get that speed effect you really chop and change there will be in-betweens but not many i can tell you that okay um so we have this pose here what i'm gonna do is i think i will leave it i will leave it that's that's clear enough for you let's uh, beef it up duplicate selected layer okay yeah that's nice merge that okay that just saves me some time so i don't have to go heavying it in okay so let's just call that b okay so there we are so we have something like this 
with the squash and stretch okay so there's a squash and now there's a stretch in his face and his neck okay squash stretch uh, and the hands are coming off it okay so now let us move on now we're coming down now look this is pure bouncing ball stuff uh, that you guys have got to understand this is pure bouncing ball stuff um, so we're now coming on to this next pose dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so this fellow comes in is, are we on this pose no let's look at the hands the eyes are open like that yeah this is the one this is the one so I've got to look at the silhouette and I can find my pose okay so now we're bringing that head right down into the character now what's interesting is is we've got this angle of the head of his upper eye line like this this is really great because we've got this kind of the head is kind of broken in half which is just absolutely amazing you know I would never dare do a drawing like this okay so I'm gonna pay attention and see what he's doing here so I can learn myself right so this eye line is here like this okay so now we're now got his other eye here like this so he's got to be the eyeballs are almost boss side so these are kind of like let's just rub that back so I can really get this because it's just, everything has to work okay I'm I'm not familiar with this type of posing okay well, I want to learn myself okay so the eye is opening out like this right and the other eyebrow is up that's fair enough that's easy stuff I know this so this eyebrow is up we got some crease in the head now this is what blows me away okay so we have the nose which is coming out here like this we have the underside of the nose so we're changing an angle in the nose I'm gonna make sure I get my proportions right on this one because I want to as I said I'm uh, I'm quite fascinated by what I see here so we have this out here we have this underneath now it's like his cheek is here and his mouth is changing direction his jaw, jaw is opening up so we have the the foremouth giving the maxilla some dimension and we got it opening here like this now I want to keep the direction of that okay I have a tendency when I draw to give some volume to the bottom lip but this is staying straight the style is staying straight and up and this is coming straight down we see the teeth like this I'm slowing down a minute here now this is the shape of the chin coming out here like this wow look at the eye okay isn't that interesting I felt that the head was kind of making this kind of shape but then we look at this in line it's right in line with the chin mirror making it all kind of um unify itself this is incredible stuff okay right so this is unifying itself right there like that this is really melt is the master of of shapes and making appeal and just making things work you know pushing the drawing in so many ways that I would never dare to do so right so we have this um, coming through here now we're just gonna stick this is the easy part that we know we're just gonna stick to this construction of the hair which kind of comes around the side with a little bit of hair piece there and then this comes off the back okay round hair now there's a little bit of back neck in here and we're really burying that head up in those colors which is just amazing okay so the triangles against the triangles milt is all about the triangles actually that's even higher that comes up there like that so my silhouette is is off so we need to push that a bit more so that comes up now we've got some uh, some overlapping action in the hair or some follow through rather always get the two mixed up following through it's continuing through on in the action 
so this is here like this and we're going to have a little bit of underside to it like that nothing like some milk call to, to knock you back a step or two and make you realize just how much more there is for you to learn right so a scholar comes here and this comes through like this right so now we're going to have the hands and i actually find the hands the easier part than the head and the shoulders to be very honest with you they're the things moving a lot faster they're nice interesting shapes but for me the subtle stuff is the amount of head bounces the character does and the um yeah the shapes and the the cheating of the timing that's going on but that said um there's other subtle stuff when i say the hands are the easiest part it doesn't mean that um i can't learn from them um what is great about these hands is is the appealing poses and choices of shape which of course are not easy they're easy for me to to break down and study from but to have come up with that those poses to have come up with those ingenious hand designs and negative space between uh the shapes and all that is something else that is just a work of genius and mastery okay so it's very easy it's like somebody doing a cover of a song they might be very competent talented at what they're doing and do a very nice uh, re re recreation of the song but that doesn't mean they have anywhere near the genius of the songwriter who has um who has actually written the music the lyrics and all of those things to make it work so nicely just need to point that out as i'm doing this if uh, i don't like to take too much credit for what you are seeing right so this um finger comes out i'm a little bit off it's touching the nose in the original but i can't spend too much time on that now the hand is now smaller in size you see we're adding some uh this just this triangle here is suggesting the thumb uh is behind there like that so we're not really showing the thumb we're just suggesting it's behind there and we're moving in there like this there we go right and on this side we have coming up here the sleeve okay which i'm just going to continue through like that i'm going to keep it rough and keep that going on right so now here what i'm going to look at is the negative space uh this straight line is going to come shooting straight down in a kind of inward fashion like this and we're just going to balance that out with a taper it out to give us a bit of elbow okay like that let's tidy it up a little bit okay and in here we have the square and we have this which he's clearly got these shapes to show the knuckle heads on the other side which i absolutely love that's a little tip of the hand so if you want to put uh the illusion of there you want to really start putting some inside the square these kind of shapes to to really like sit you'll see against the graphic shapes that he has of the of the fingers and the thumb and all that just a square hair and all that like that if we balance it with these nice creases and folds inside the hand we get a really appealing nice looking hand okay see look that we got a almost square like thing there and then we're just going to put a a lump there and then bring it straight and then curl it off there we get this nice crease now we can play with the angle so even though this finger is longer right we're going to bring the angle in slightly because we're going to foreshorten now what we're going to do is we're going to just create a shape like this bring the angle in but we're going to start creating round kind of cut off shapes inside to kind of foreshorten that to really give that finger some foreshortening and again similarly we're going to show the head of the knuckle here okay and then we're just going to come in and make a nice little circle in here kind of like square like circle in here and just put these lines here to add some foreshortening it's just a genius genius the, this guy's hands he's just absolute genius okay and then we're just going to bring this one off here to cut that off to give us a nice kind of appealing hand shapes going on in there like that right well what we're also going to do is we're going to bring the pipe 
we're going to look at the pipe we're going to look at the arc of that pipe it's going to just like the uh, pendulum swinging and slowing on one side we're going to keep it we're going to favor this up position we're just going to change the angle of the pipe notice how the negative space is in relation to the thumb is just beautiful that's one thing I'm getting into if you want to get into the mind of where I am currently at right now in my own personal animation development rather than what I'm teaching you I'm looking at um, I'm looking at negative um, let's just change the opacity of that to about 50 I'm looking at uh, negative space okay uh, in shapes um, that's what I'm doing I'm looking at negative space in shapes okay so we're gonna have that as B right okay so here's what we've got at the moment right so we've got this kind of thing happening right so let's move on um, let's just see what's going on in the chat we are one hour 20 minute in um, not much I guess you know we've got 26 people watching um, 26 dedicated animators watching I guess not that many people are so interested in what's going on but that's okay I've gotten used to that in real animator training as I like to say um, the you know uh, to many people who do their work and are perhaps um, frustrated about your if you're you know we live in a world of social media and it took me a long time to to understand this and this is why I'm totally comfortable with where I am at the moment in terms of uh, what what I do with real animator training and and who I connect with and my audience and so a little advice for people out there who are frustrated if they're trying to build an Instagram or something like that you got to understand what it is and who you're who you're who you're communicating with and once you understand that then you're going to understand then you're going to have a better perspective on why things are the way they are okay so now if I am um, my agenda with what I'm doing here even by picking old like for example if I'd picked some popular anime big anime thing I'm pretty sure my audience would have been a little bit bigger right now and people would be coming in the chat and talking about anime more so or those kind of things but that's not my agenda my agenda is to educate and instruct the passionate few and I say that again the passionate few in how to become amazing animators and while it's true uh, that anybody who puts their mind to something can become good at it and do it well there's a reason we have a one percent of su super successful people in society or a ten percent of very successful people and so on and so forth so the way I see it is the kind of animation that I teach and the kind of animation that you're seeing me break down here is done by the 1% uh, or the 10%, the most amazing, uh, super talented, amazing form of animation out there. It isn't the McDonald's. It isn't the, you know, the, uh, the, the easy anyone can do kind of stuff it's it takes patience to do it let you know and it takes patience to watch it being done well uh, let alone learn it so um, so then that's why it's important to to understand when you're doing your your work if you're frustrated you know perhaps if your your goal is to have a big following then you should go and study what it takes to to have a big following and go and study people who have a big following and see what they're doing rather than trying to be a good artist or rather than trying to improve your animation or get it to a high level uh, so this is where a lot of confusion takes place in the art world and i must admit when i first started doing youtube videos it used to bother me a lot it used to bother me a lot that here i am an extremely experienced animator and industry professional 
sharing my knowledge and nobody wants it but that was my problem um, that was my problem and my misunderstanding and my ignorance and my stupidity um, because you know you cannot you know the, the the you have to understand what it is you're trying to do you uh, uh, you cannot a dog might think it's a cat but it's a dog you can't change it you know it's that's what it is so if i'm on youtube trying to get lots and lots of followers but trying to do it my way and force things upon people that don't want it because you know only one percent to ten percent of people are going to be, want to be elite and that's just the way of the world then you know you can't expect it you can't expect it to be any different so that's how i'm totally you know ah i get it now and that's why my tone often upsets people in the way i communicate to my audience is i actually in my delivery sometimes look to drive people away because i only want my audience to be um dare i say it elite so do those watching right now and who are sticking with this thank you i'm no doubt that you guys are pretty serious about um your animation and it is a pleasure to make this stream for you because i'm not going to put this away this is going to stay online for you to study and refer to whenever you want right so now we're coming into a squash pose so we can see the squash and stretch and the the opening of the eye there really gives us a nice secondary action because if we look from hair to hair this actually is extreme to extreme why i put in this other key is because his shoulders come up and they move back okay the shoulder arc does this right okay uh, and but the head is continuing to go down okay the head is actually just slowing in here so it was difficult for me to determine which one was an extreme i would have just gone from hair to hair but the re other reason i put this in here was to save me time from drawing it later on is this look at his eyes are opening and then they're closing again so that gives us you know that that's a key because that kind of determines this opening of the eye he's looking at the pipe and his eyes are closing again so that really kind of um gives us a little bit more to go with there so i'm gonna bring this in just a little bit like this and now we're gonna do the hands so the hands are coming up like this so i've kind of got thickened my hand a little bit as it's doing that which isn't you know but that's actually i was worried about that but what's happening is is we're adding a little bit of raise and you know he's raising his hand up so we might be okay but as i said as i'm speeding through this thing i'm gonna have get a few things wrong because there's just so much okay going in here and i'm trying my best to make sure i can give you as much information as i can with as clear drawing as i can without it being too loose and too scribbly so when you're doing that your animation is going to perhaps suffer a little bit in consistency right so now what we have here is we have the pull of the skin on that saddle joint of the thumb which is just beautiful okay and then what we have to separate hair to make the space again we have the negative space of the of the square that's used to construct the hand but by putting these little lines inside there we really really have the um uh what make it appear more anatomical that anatomically informed if you would to give these hands just a little bit more uh, interest see all we have is just a rectangle here and then we have another rectangle come off and then we put a little bump at the bottom and then straighten that and then just add the nail and then a few lines and then we suddenly get an anatomically informed hand it's just the efficient simple and effective and that is um, mastery 
that is what is mastery. Now we've got the th the 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 final phalanges are scrolling up at the end there in this big straight line underneath to make it all sit. And this one is going to come here like this. I don't know if I'm going to have much time to do any of the other keys the way this is going. Um, but I think with the eyes opening, I'm going to look. If his eyes are closed in too many extremes, I'm going to look where his eyes are opened and, and just suggest them. So as I, you can see, because it's the opening and closing eyes, the the double blinks and all that that really give Milk Carl work. It's uh, its signature and personality in his acting style. Okay, so we have this you know, like this. The I love this. This look at the negative space of those um, wrists and the forearms creating that triangle. I absolutely love it. It is just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful work. Right, so. This comes through here like this. I'm going to see how many drawings we've got left to do and what how we're doing for time. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's nicer with that softer line. I shouldn't have heavied that one up. Okay, never mind. Right, um, how are we doing for time? We are uh, 1 hour 30. Not that bad in. Um, now I'm going to see what's going on in the chat because I've got some nice um, people going in and uh, talking in there. So why did I do that? I wanted to do this. I wanted to see how many drawings we've got left. Not that many. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we'll make it. Okay, so here we can see, okay, where we're going with this. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to go and do the next one, which is another slow out. So I'm going and switching to kind of straight ahead there like that. Um, so let's go and do this one next. Let's just keep eyeballing it. And I'll look. What I'll do is I will also, because this isn't a training stream, it's also a YouTube chat. So I'm going to go and see um, what people are saying in the chat and see if there's an interesting point that I can elaborate on. Okay, so Tetra has come online being drunk. Um, so uh, Charlene says, what made you choose this clip for your future study in your journey? Okay. Um, Life Fantasy says, well, I was watching 100 Mon Dalmatians and saw this part stood out and really fascinated me. Awesome. And uh, it's such a creative and unique reaction that it fits not just the scene, but also Roger's character. It also uses all the laws extremely well. I really wanted to see how it was broken down. Um, I think Klaus will have a re limited release in theaters. I hope people go and see it. Um, dun, dun, dun. I have been noticing that the forearm keeps stretching from one drawing to the next, but I wonder if that isn't noticeable once it's running in real time, or is it a form of foreshortening? I've been noticing the same thing, Oscar. Let me analyze it at the end, as I said. And what you have to bear in mind is, as I'm doing this, um, no one animates like the way I'm doing this, okay? It's a, you know, as you go through the library exercises, uh, Oscar, we don't just draw the character on model over the silhouette like that. I'm referring to something and I'm eyeballing it and I'm using straight ahead, even though I'm looking for keys. So what you're seeing is looking good but you know it's it's not going to be a complete representation of what milk carl has done it's best for you to go and look at that scene and try and and, and have a look at that as well i'm breaking it down and showing you the main points but uh there's no way that i'm going to be able to draw to this level and accurately recreate it in just a couple of hours <laughs> but i'm trying i'm trying okay right so let's now look at the next pose which is going to be I believe it's this one okay yes this is the next pose right yes so as life fantasy said um, this uh, this piece of animation really does cover the demonstrate all of those basic fundamental laws uh, that she has learned in the 
basics and also that she is also starting to learn in the intermediate archive of the real animator training library it's covering them all and I'm going to explain them to you afterwards at the end so we all can kind of see them clearly but what I what I will tell you is the ones that are mainly at play offhand that I would say really um, gone in what I think fundamentally are exhibited in this um, is the law of um, primary and secondary action first and foremost um, because he's done something like uh, a simple thing a take where he is smoking his pipe and he's just made him kind of lose the balance of the pipe and catch it and he's really gone to town with it so the primary action is the take the secondary action is the stumbling of the hands with the pipe and of course even afterwards there's more which I haven't included because I just don't have the time to do everything is the end settling pose um, where he looks at his dog who has taken his attention below so um, primary and secondary is foremost for me at play in this but then of course um, there's also execution so I would have said that this would have been another example of a mixture of the you know uh, go-betweens of the law of pose to pose animation and straight ahead animation so I believe he might have um, done a straight ahead pass um, particularly with the hands and then afterwards he would have um, gone in and really refined those poses and as somebody was mentioning earlier about the arm width and size Oscar is a beginner Oscar is a beginner he's joined the real animated training basics one thing um, that you must understand Oscar is that drawing consistency okay particularly when you're roughing out your animation at the beginning is of zero importance okay I happen to be quite good at it uh, over habitual practice through time and that's what the training library and the exercises are designed to make you do uh, as you keep on repeatedly doing certain things with a bouncing ball you will um, become quite good at consistency through habitually training your hand-eye coordination but that said however good I or anybody else is at it when we are making initial roughs okay one these initial roughs would not be really as informed as what I'm doing here I'm referring to somebody else's masterpiece which is why they're quite informed um, I would be more concerned about the the arcing of the animation the the overall gesture of the pose um, the silhouette and all those kind of things I would be more interested about the the timing the arcing the slowing in and slowing out all of those important fundamental laws the drawing and consistency that again I think this is a something that is a unfortunate emphasis is placed on this by the barrage of um, misinformed shall I say um, people who are trying to self train themselves on YouTube and they have a tendency to love anime and uh, animation that perhaps is very limited that doesn't move quite so much where it's all about the illustrative drawing they think uh, that the the movement and the illusion of life more so than the movement the illusion of life because a lot of those anime fights lack weight however appealing they are they lack weight and to me they're just movements I don't feel the power of the blows a simple smear line and uh, a character shouting and a big 
explosion behind him is not giving me a feeling of power of blows okay but that might be the case for a juvenile who's into that stuff or or somebody who's just a diehard fan into that stuff might like that but to me that's a movement it's not the illusion of life so as a as a as a expert and somebody who is interested in conveying the illusion of life more so than the illusion of movement my priority is going to be on all of those fundamental things even if i was doing something like an anime fight which was more about the illusion of movement again my priority would still be before focusing on the consistency of the drawing okay the the size and making it all feel like it's the same size my priority would be more on getting those arcs right on getting the timing right and on getting all those things right so as a the initial starting thing i think oscar although you don't have access to those lectures because they are not in the beginner archive i think you caught a few of those lectures of the peacock in the secret science of shape simplification um, hopefully you'll remember from that that we started out with a really really simple line scribble sketch okay and then over time we built on it uh, so consistency really really was at the end of it all okay um, so I know that the, one of the things is is when you watch when you have access to established professionals such as myself and you know you have the amazing Aaron Blaze online too who I'll never uh, hesitate to um, to mention because I don't believe I uh, in in uh, competition uh, especially when the both of us are uh, are at the same have the same agenda which is to help people learn how to do things well so you have I don't know if there's anyone else out there but uh, if you have access to professionals not not amateurs who have just done something that you think it looks good but if you're watching professionals working there there is a temptation because you see them draw and as they draw they're so well trained that they are appearing to keep things consistent there's a tendency to believe that you should be doing that at your level as well let me tell you that you need to get that out of your head immediately and you need to focus on the important fundamental principles and understand that the consistency of drawing will come to you so long as you are executing those fundamental principles in a in a correct manner in a manner that you have learned and understood so if you learn about shapes and arcs and and uh, solid drawing through construction of these shapes and arcs then you're going to find that over time as you habitually do it like you would curl a bicep weight um you're going to uh just your muscle will get bigger it's the same thing your hand-eye coordination will get bigger but let's it's a fast movement so as i said with the squash and stretch of the neck let's have a look at what happens okay again we don't really see much of that going on there um so it doesn't seem to affect the movement as of hand but you know if i was to tie this down i would go back and try and and change a little bit but as i about uh, and, and see what i was doing but um this is just me eyeballing what i see and that's the way it's going and it seems to work um work quite well actually right um let's move on to the next pose um Well, I saw Akau, Akau bludgeoning people. Hey, Akau, look, if they want to talk software in the um, in the training library, I mean, not the training library. They're, they're, I mean, that's why they're probably not in the training library. Uh, but if they want to talk software, let them, you know. The people who are, I'm pretty sure that how many people have we got online? 
we have got uh, 33 people online at the moment um, and the chat is probably involving about I don't know let's say the chat's evolving from the looks at the glance about seven or eight people max I don't know so I'm, I think that's pretty good I think there's a lot of people actually wanting to learn so you know they're watching and whatever so don't let them let let them talk about this let's let's not be too um let's not be too you know they they, they have to take responsibility for their own actions uh Akal. if they um if they're getting all this stuff and they would rather um rather talk about the software and what they know about software then you know I'm glad that my stream is giving them a feeling of self-importance. You know, it's that's what it's there for. It's 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 to make people feel good as well. There we go. Right. So uh, this nose is coming up now. What we're doing? We're keeping those eyes closed. You see the little squ the little uh, um, squash in the face. Even though this is moving up, the eyebrows are moving down. So that really gives us that nice feel and then we're moving in to this uh typical you know oscar if you're still watching the bouncing ball effect going on here okay so the squash when you'll be moving on to doing the ball bounce with squash and stretch the squash uh has a couple of frames down there and then it bounces up with a big movement which is exactly what's going on with the head here typical bouncing ball action right so this is coming up and you'll notice that as I'm going through this study I'm getting more and more comfortable with the shapes uh, of the character design in order to um, to get through it so what I'm seeing is I'm kind of going okay that's how that works and again if you understand the secret science of shape simplification um, you will start to speed up in this area too so this head, I'm, I've kind of got my volume the head is a little bit small it's a little bit out but I'll live with that as all well. I want to stick in with the movement remember what I said at the beginning okay if I was gonna lock this animation down I would go and slightly fix the volume of the head but I said that once the silhouette works well um, you look at the little bit of um, overlap in the hair there so nice once the silhouette works uh, well then you you basically have got something that is gonna kind of look nice anyway um, you know um, because because it's that, that master shape is moving so well okay now how to tie it all together is what separates the men from the boys okay um, but roughing quickly on here I think this is just enough this is just what we need right so now I'm going to turn my light box on and just see what I want to do with this color here like this another thing to take note again Oscar I like talking to Oscar because not only is he a new member he's he's a new member but he's he's asking questions and they're the kind of questions that I feel I can help set him out on his on his path to progress so what you might notice is I'm not really using the light box when I'm doing this, okay? Um, and if you're interested in consistency uh, when you're animating, that's one of the best things for you to do because what I'm relying on, okay, is I'm relying on watching those shapes. I'm relying on watching those shapes changing, okay? That's what I'm relying on doing. One of the things I missed out there was this, yeah, like there, like that. So that's what I'm relying on doing. I'm relying on making the changing shapes, uh, flipping forwards and backwards, looking at the negative space here, okay, to see what I get. Okay, so then here we're going to have something like this, okay, and this is going to move in there like this, okay. And seeing how we can create that illusion what I have noticed about this front arm is there is a lot of changing in the apparent uh, changing in the length of this arm and it could actually lend itself to 
how sometimes things are foreshortened um, in what's happening or it could just simply be that as I focused on the hands and I've tried to do the hands and the head at the same time I have indeed um, been a little careless with the arm arcs okay but as long as I get those hands in and that head bounce in that's all I really want you to see okay because the the arms and all that stuff or while they're important to the piece of animation to the to the person learning okay depending on your level okay if you were like a life fantasy who asked me about this particular um, piece of animation you would already know how to sort those arms out afterwards okay but it's mainly the hands uh, and the head and seeing what's happening with the bouncing going on there let's look at the sleeve is going to sit around there like that and the curve going there so it's a lovely look at the 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 arc of the head comes down the slow in out the angle change there we're almost to the end of this actually we don't have we just three more drawings to do after this it's gone through a lot quicker than I thought it would have okay um, but then you know uh, as I said there have been some inconsistencies but I think overall we've got a nice grasp of what it is we're trying to do right so this hand is going to come through and the finger again here the pipe is secondary I think he would have added the pipe last uh, I don't but again I'm just drawing the pipe in along with this as I see it this is interesting okay this is an interesting hand shape so he's got the back there the finger is coming around here like this and it's he's got it kind of curling with the digits out there like that you know that's what separates him from his understudy Bluth I think Bluth shapes are just a little too easier to identify I mean I love Bluth but I love the you know Milt will just throw in such illustrative curveballs that sometimes you think how how the how the heck is he getting away with that you know how how is that even possible and that how did that even look like a hand <laughs> you know I mean but there you go it looks like a hand right so this thing is going to turn around the pipe is coming through here my negative space between the pipe and the thumb is slightly off but I don't want to ruin my arc of my animation so I'm going to have to use a bit of artistic license there to get that right there we go it's coming out down there like that okay what I'll do after this is see if he opens his eyes again at all in any of these so just to see if I need to do any more drawings bear with me um okay right his eyes are closed eyes are closed eyes are open okay he opens his eyes i might just do one more drawing in all of this and then that's it yeah okay right yeah i'll just add so we've got three drawings to do of the original extremes and then i will make one more drawing to make a point about something right so let's just move back so we just did this one didn't we so now we want to do him kind of holding the pipe there like that that's the one so his eyes are opening again here right let us that was a good good little point by oscar it helped me talk about drawing and consistency and animation so thank you oscar before i continue let me have a little look in the chat to see what else people are saying um I've never seen such duty work polish before in my life. The lighting killed me. Oh, okay, so we're talking about something else. I'm definitely hanging around. I'm looking forward to the next exercise in the basics course. Awesome. Um, Travis, I eagerly await for it. I wanna. I guess you're talking about Klaus. Um, paper will never delete your drawings with a pop-up in your face saying you, you hard work you put our sweat and tears 
exe has stopped working oh i get it your software has uh and i can't help but laugh as akal the warrior you see a little see a little spanner sign in Ak Ak next to akal's name he's a moderator and i think of akal bludgeoning anybody with his spanner amb said to curb the software talk <laughs> i've got to love akal it has to be said um let's look for too many of us only get hired for the cheap tweeny stuff but we can use bits of what you're showing here in cheap tweeny stuff only if only a little bit okay that was a good thing for me to talk about when i make the next drawing raf vids thank you for such an important uh opportunity for me to to help you with your mindset because i think what you're saying is true but your mindset is a little bit off okay right if you're looking to get hired okay to do cheap tweeny stuff that's okay okay you're looking to be a, a jobs worth okay you're looking to just do what eventually a machine will do without you okay fantastic if that's your life's ambition i wish you well okay or you um are basically just too dependent on on what a certain level of people want and what you want to do that's fine but okay there there are other people who are perhaps hired to do the cheap tweeny stuff as well that see themselves inside as more that know that they're gonna be more that see themselves as doing the cheap tweeny stuff is just merely a stepping stone okay you know um i'm pretty sure i can't think of any names but i'm pretty sure there have been some super mega successful one percent people in this world who have waited tables who have um cleaned excrement from the street gutters okay and have moved on because they didn't see themselves as you know the average joe okay so i like what you're saying you're saying i'm gonna use this and some of the cheap tweeny stuff but only i'll only get to use a little bit because it's too cheap and it's too tweeny and it's too shit yeah i'm totally with you you never said it like that but i have to point it out that's what it is okay so you never said you never said it like that but the fact is you need to understand that you your life's purpose as an animator it might be just to be a servant to these people you know okay but effectively it i can't help but think you're shortchanging yourself okay i study this stuff all the time for myself because i know it'll make me even better so even where i am right now okay some people perhaps think i'm way better than what i am and some people think i'm way worse than what i am but i know how good i am and i know what i can do and i think we can all agree that i'm pretty darn good okay so but that doesn't stop me from doing this kind of work because i know where it's going to take me knowledge is you know uh, is one of the best things that you can have as your guide you know knowledge truly is power okay but it's only power when you use it otherwise it's just it's just rubbish okay you need specialized knowledge in order for you to take things further if you are just if all you see yourself doing for the rest of your life is depending on cheap tweeny industry productions you need to understand that the way things are now aren't going to stay the same anybody who says i like things just the way they are is advertising their own ignorance okay because just like the machines came and made the cheap tweeny stuff uh, to make hand-drawn animation uh less prominent than what it is today okay 
The reason being is they wanted to save time. They wanted to get rid of a lot of the processes like cleanup, in betweening, um, you know, drawing in general. They they couldn't afford that many talented people. Okay. It was difficult. Those animators charged a lot of money and so they should have for their amazing abilities. So they created this software. But don't think that that's the end of the journey because the software creation is going to continue to the point where they get rid of the monkey pushing the button. Okay, because that's what today's animators are, the monkeys, you know. Some people used to say that masturbation was spanking the monkey, okay. I say that today's animators spank the monkey. They ain't got no talent. They ain't got no skill. They ain't got no ability. Okay? A lot of them. Okay? The ones you see on these big movies, how many of them are there? Not that many. Okay? Doing these big... I'm talking about these cutout shape sliders. Okay? They're monkeys pushing buttons. And I'm basically trying to tell you in a nice way, see yourself as more than a monkey pushing a button, my friend. Okay? See yourself as a real animator. See yourself as somebody who truly understands the laws of animation and who's going to do something substantial with them. Okay? It's okay if you don't want to. It's absolutely fine. Okay? There's room for everybody. You know, the world loves mediocrity. That's why there's 90% of people out there that are just simply mediocre. Okay? But this stuff that I'm sharing... Is for the 10 percenters, the 1 percenters, the people who want to extremely excel at what they're doing, which is exactly why we're making these studies. So hopefully I've been able to communicate something there with you that, um, that'll enable you to think about pushing it even further, pushing it further, pushing your own work further, making demanding more of yourself. And the more you demand from yourself, the brighter you'll shine and others will come to you to see more of that greatness. Okay? It really is that simple. But just, yeah, the minute you stop becoming dependent, that's when things are going to start happening. Independent artists. That's where I see it going. Right. Um, kind of stopped talking about the scene that we're doing as I focused on the chat a little bit because ultimately there's not much more I can really explain as I draw in this character. Um, I've kind of touched on the the main things uh, even when doing the silhouette here like I touched on I'll show it to you in a minute I touched on the hand shape okay now here I can even see with milk curls okay this is the perfect example to check what Oscar said Okay, let's go back. Yes, there is a growth in Milk Carl's arm here. Okay, it's not as prominent as mine. Okay, there's a little bit of in betweening in here, but there's a there's an extension happening here. So this is going on. Okay, it is going on, but it doesn't seem to affect it. Okay, so there we go, right? So again, that's what I my big takeaway is on there, the shape of these two hands, which I pointed out in the silhouette anyway, which is all great stuff. Right, so there we are. We have just almost now two drawings left to do, okay, as I start tying this thing together. And we start settling in with the slow in. And this is, of course, what I learned from my mentor who photocopied a lot of had a lot of Xeroxes from the rescuers when I was um, studying with him. And I was studying the rescuers and he was saying, look at all these volume shifts in Milk Carl's work. And that was a revelation to me because before I was like a, a little, even though I was an industry uh, pro, I wouldn't say, you know, as I said, there are different levels of pros in the industry. I hadn't met my mentor then, okay? And it's only after I met him um, that I actually started to get any good in my opinion, right? So, um, I was a little bit like Oscar. I was like, oh, consistency or oh, volume. And a lot of the stuff I'd learned from working at other British animation studios was place and trace stuff. And they would always place and trace and shift and trace because they were so afraid of 
the character changing size. That's why I think they absolutely love um, Flash animation, which is now Dune Boom animation and um, uh, yeah, Harmony, I guess. That's the, that's the main one. There's another one out there. I can't remember the name. They sent me a free software, um, but I can't remember the name. I just couldn't use it. Um, but uh, yeah, they loved Place and Trace and what it gave was this weird looking animation where everything kind of slid body parts were just sliding around and it just had this very stiff dead look and then after meeting him and looking at the milk cow madame medusa that's when i started caring less about volume and he also because he worked with glenn keen he also showed me some of glenn Keane's stuff as well um, i can't remember exactly what it was i think it was some stuff from um Pocahontas because he worked with Glenn Keane on Pocahontas so he showed me some Pocahontas stuff and he said look at all this look this guy this film is very based on solid drawing and consistency and all that but look at the shapes here look at the changes here it's all about the shapes and the changes that make the animation interesting this is what makes hand-drawn animation unique and powerful and exactly what it is so I guess when you are as experienced and as skilled as these guys, you know exactly when, where, and how to make your shape changes. So here we see this head is shifting in its angle up here. And it really is like a bouncing ball stuff. The the hair, the um, little quiff of hair he's got is catching up on itself. But you see the spacing. So we're close together, we're far away, we're close. We're, we're far away again so it's then we're then we bounce up and we're more closer together here so we're getting that effect and the mouth is opening up nicely there I'm going to turn on the light box just to keep an eye on the color because we want to think a little bit about for the sake of the stream consistency so we're going to have this hair like this and um, now I'm just going to speed through and, and sort these hands out, okay? So the color is coming up in here. I'm going to go and look at how we're doing for time. Okay, let's have a look at this. I'm going to keep this here and we're going to sh sh shrink these arms back in. I think what happens is we want to delay that. Why the shoulder grows there now, I know, Oscar, is because of the hunched the shoulders are kind of hunching and then going down and hunching up again so he's exaggerating that hunching shoulder effect to just give him just give the action more bounce and more sort of stagger and or whatever in there so you'll see this clip is on youtube and you can see it the youtube clip calls it 101 dalmatians the puppies are here and you can go and google that or youtube that and you can use the I don't know the names of it, the full stop and the comma. I don't know the names of it. Okay, I always look at the two arrows above, which I don't know. And you can Google those, not Google those, you can go to your keyboard and use those, right? And you can see for yourself uh, exactly what I'm talking about. Mine's a little bit more pronounced than his. His isn't as extreme. Okay, as I said, there's going to be some inconsistencies as I've sped through this. But he is growing and shrinking in places to emphasize those shoulder shrugs and things like that. So, right, let's have this hand come here. So we're almost done, exciting stuff, just another drawing to make, and then I'm gonna make a very quick breakdown, which is not going to be drawn to these levels because I just want to illustrate something to you about timing of the facial expression, which we haven't really touched on. So this is going to sit here and the pipe is going to come in here like this. So we've got that. So now we see these hands are kind of slowing in. The main hand holding the pipe is kind of hit there and it's going to slow in as the other hand is offset and catching up with it. Just an amazing silhouette on that hand. Absolutely amazing stuff coming around there like that okay and as I draw this hand in before I go on to make the final drawing uh, I will just have a look at the chat and again see what if there's anything that we can 
joke about that's a little bit you know uh what will make the stream a little bit more interesting than just watching me kind of beef up the silhouettes um which is now kind of like what the process is um becoming because we've kind of covered pretty much all those things if i see anything extra i'll tell you okay so we've got this let's just look at this drawing and this drawing to see how we're doing for sizing okay so we have this one and this one not bad okay right now let's just lightly gray the final one and get the black and have a look at the chat Mm -hmm. is there a video on how you're so accurate in silhouette keyframes secret science of shape simplification watch the latest videos on that um, any advice for learning animating dancing example a waltz or a swing perfect question it's gonna give me who said i'd be doing cheap tweening for the rest of my life exactly that's the attitude that's the attitude i didn't say that i just gave you food for thought my friend okay you made the comment it'll kind of work with a cheap tweeny thumb so it was my job to get that little bit of anger in you hey that's right that's what i want you're too good to be doing cheap tweeny shit for the rest of your life especially if you're watching my videos so i'm gonna make you i'm gonna put that question to you and let's watch you accelerate yourself my friend that's exactly what i want you to do right um so perfect question nintendude any advice for learning animating dancing especially a waltz or a swing travis below says study a real dance and try it yourself learn the weight it's placed travis is a real animator training person he's a library member he's also had some personal mentoring from me in my inner circle so you would do well to listen to what he says but i would say travis good as though he is he's missed something okay and i'm going to tell you what it is right um here's the thing here's the thing this is the this is the class a error that people attending animation school have chance upon okay they begin with a bouncing ball which is what i tell people to begin with okay they begin with a bouncing ball but then they get caught up in trying to make the bouncing ball realistic you know their teacher at school will go oh you got to study a real ball my friend you got to look at the physics and then try and convey the weight and then get it right look at the real thing watch a real ball don't make it up Arrgh. all right so that's the that therein lies the problem okay because you can study real dancing to try and animate it okay you can study that but do you know how to arc properly do you know how to time properly do you know when to utilize pose to pose and straight ahead to identify key frames extreme frames and breakdowns when you make your study how much of these things do you know do you understand follow through and overlap do you understand primary and secondary action okay will you understand how best to accentuate squash and stretch in these things okay so if you cannot do these things with a simple bouncing ball okay then you will have even if you're trying to study a real ball bounce and study the physics okay you can half ass it and eyeball your way to doing it by just copying the frames like a rotoscope man and you might have something that looks like a realistic ball bounce or a realistic dance okay doesn't matter but the fact of the matter is is, is then when you try it again you will have no knowledge you will have no ability you will have no understanding of how you did it it would have been an exercise in ignorance plain ignorance so what i say to people and you know it's what i always say and it's what people don't like to hear is basic fundamental knowledge okay all of this stuff you see me doing like studying these frames of animation and quite 
effectively recreating them in let's see how long we've had I'd say this is two hours 14 minutes and I'm on the last drawing okay if I wasn't talking so much and, and getting involved in the chat I reckon it would have been just under two hours I would have done this done and that's pretty darn impressive I think okay am I blowing my own trumpet yes I am but only partly okay here's the thing to be able to do that you need to understand what you're looking for you need to understand the laws you need to understand how it all works so if you come to my channel okay a lot of people say you got to be positive and they think I'm being negative because of my harsh tone and and I'm I'm it seems like I'm being discouraging telling you oh don't see yourself as this or or you know you're not good enough to animate a dancing yet how good is your understanding of the laws so some namby pamby little fool would come and say he's a negative he's saying I can't do it oh show him I can do it I can do it I'll do it you know well quite frankly if you really understand what I'm doing I'm giving you the medicine that you need okay you know yes you can be anything you want to be yes you can turn yourself into anything you want to be yes you can be free with your temple my friend be free but the point of the matter is that ultimately in order to do that you have to understand how okay how and why you need to know the rules in order to do it effectively and once you know that then you can study a real dance and then you can make that dance look great okay because you understand all of those laws and you can see them being put into practice it really is as simple as that you need to be patient you need to understand that it takes time to learn something and do it well and to animate somebody dancing okay a dance is a, is an elaboration elaboration of many kind of forms of human movement which the main form of human movement is walking how often have you animated a walk cycle and how good is your walk cycle can you animate a hop cycle a jump cycle a run cycle a skip cycle if you cannot do those things then your ability to move a character in, in a graceful manner such as a dance is going to be limited because all right what kind of down pose is your down pose combined with your pass pose okay what what's happening in the up pose okay where what are the arms doing are they primary or secondary is the character counterbalancing or intentionally off balance okay do you know are you trained enough to see these things in order to push it and make it work well okay so my answer is the kind of answer that people perhaps don't like to hear because it means they've got to go away and do things that they perhaps don't enjoy doing and they want to jump straight into it but remember like the little kid can't wait until he's an adult okay he can't wait until he's grown up he's all grown up but then most of them when they become all grown up have spent their childhood in ignorance waiting to be a grown-up and then they want to be a child again because they've wasted their formulative years in not learning the things that matter but I tell you one thing those of us who were children that spent our time learning the right things absolutely love adult life because as I said we can do anything we want to be we we can turn ourselves into anything we want to be and we can be free with our temples be free be free as said by Freddie Mercury right and on that note we have come to the end the last pose where we are coming out so what we have at the moment is this okay we can see that we have this head bobbing here like this and I'm going to add one more drawing in there towards the end okay what I'm going to do, which I have missed here, and I've got it here, is just to keep some consistency. I'm going to bring out his eyebrows a little bit. Okay, so we've got this. Right, now I've just got one more drawing that I'm going to make, and then I'm going to call it a day. 
So let's have a look. Um, Cape Akao is deleting Cape's comments. Cape is usually very uh, is a friend of mine online. Akao, I hope you're not. <laughs> sometimes Akao, um, Akao goes in there and uh, punishes people. No, you're not misleading anyone, Travis. You're not misleading anyone at all. Um, you should put in your. Uh, you should put in your uh, your your feedback. Your feedback was great, Travis. You should be looking. You should be looking at a real dance. And the great thing is, is we get to share. I get to to teach you a little bit as well. But you know, you you've had more direct contact with me than most on here. So you know how important those fundamentals are. Okay, right. So, um, last drawing is what we're going to do is we are going to um, go from, we're going to break this down. I'm going to put in a breakdown key from here to here, okay? This needs it. We need to illustrate what's happening, okay? So let's see what happens. Let me just look at my frames. Okay, that's up here. Okay, so the expression change happens and we're slowing out. So I'm going to come in here and I'm very quickly going to um, I'm very quickly let's map it out in vector so it's, it's it's just quick and I can then go and put it on so I can just map out this shape here so this nose is almost halfway I'm gonna put the nose on a half I don't know if it is on a half okay actually I'm gonna put this up I think it's on a third we're slowing out we shouldn't so this is a spacing issue here okay um, the colors, let's see what's happening with the colors. Are they on a different timing? Breakdown key. No, the colors are kind of just growing up into there. We're just playing it safe. So I'm going to put those colors on a half. Okay. Those colors are just going to be on a half there like this. These are going to be here like this. The hands. Okay. Okay. The hands. The hands are coming around. I'm going to put the hands on a half. Okay, this is going to be going on a half hair like this, 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 this. Okay, you see how I block, okay, when I'm working super, super fast because I don't want this stream to go on for much longer. It's gone on for too long as far as I'm concerned. Now I'm going to focus on this shape like this. This is the arcing happening here. I'm going to bring this around. You see this is in line with this. You see how I figure that out. Tetro asking me about silhouettes. You got to look for landmarks. Work your life drawing Tetro. Work your gesture drawing. Get good at your hand eye coordination to see things quickly. And you know you too my friend will be able to accomplish great things. Okay right so this we can figure out the rest of that. So what's happening here is the eyes are opening up. Okay. So this is the important thing. Life fantasy, if you're still online, which I know you are, pay attention. Okay. This is what makes the expression change interesting. Okay. So we're going to have this come up here like that. Okay. That's enough information for me. Let's just quickly see. Okay. We can put that there there this hand we don't want this to be too wobbly as Oscar quite rightly pointed out uh, we want this yeah there we go okay so now let's go and beef, beef this up and we are done right right so you see my spacing has already worked out so it's now the drawing head comes in okay so I'm just gonna it's gonna be relatively easy for me uh, let me bank the opacity of this up no I don't my brush is it should be 20 that's why it's a little small and wishy-washy that brush should be like this okay so the nose is coming here so now the drawing head is coming on once the drawing heads on I just think about filling in that silhouette I've kind of mapped it out you see my silhouette tetro was consistent okay the silhouette was consistent enough it's not you know if I was working serious if I was working uh, to really make a nice clean finished piece of animation then no but it'll do for this okay so now life fantasy the eyes are opening 
okay up here and that's where we're going to notice the expression of those eyes opening and then going closed throughout the rest of the scene we need to keep them open for a little bit longer than just that one pose down here so it's not going to open down here we're going to open up here and come down okay that's what creates more interesting life into the the pose right this is going to come down through here the ear shape is going to be out here like this and the hair is coming here i'm being very very careless now but i think it's okay okay let's just keep that in line with that we don't want too much inconsistency happening there and the hair is kind of following through okay there being very very wispy and hairy with the lines now because this drawing the colors are actually not on a half okay they come up more so they'll be more like a third of the level up actually so it's almost slowing right in to there like this so I'm going to have to change my spacing on those scholars to bring it up we actually are really coming up with those shoulders up high so it's not we're working thirds here people okay sorry if you don't understand the lingo there's a lot of library members in here and um, I've got to kind of the question was asked from a library member to me to break this down so um, I'm going to talk in lingo that they understand to keep this a little bit informative from them rather than just a let's watch A and B do a really good recreation of a great piece of animation. Now, let's put a bit of value in there. Okay, right. So, uh, this thing is going to come here like this. I'm going to pay attention. Light box on just a little bit to pay attention to this sleeve, which I was very careless of in width and volume throughout the scene okay because i you know the light box comes on when you really want to in between things but it's you know sometimes i'll either have it on sometimes just to just you know when you used to animate on paper without the light box you could still very just see really faintly the underdrawing so it didn't uh didn't affect your drawing choices but you kind of knew where the where the placement was you know you don't want to uh, you know people have it on for the wrong reasons you kind of uh, what some people do is they kind of use it and look look really carefully at where the lines are underneath while making key drawings you should never do that it's you know you need to your key drawings need to be independent and fresh and they have to uh, relate to the previous drawing only by arcs and shapes okay um, the the if you're using the drawing underneath or after to guide the way you make your key drawing that is the mindset of an in-betweening assistant okay so this comes here like this right being super super quick and then this hand comes here so we're being a little bit careless with this drawing but as I said it's not an extreme and I'm just trying to speed through it because I want to come off the stream my throat is getting scratchy as I talk consistently throughout to keep these streams interesting okay all uh, right so this finger is gonna come here like this and this one comes out now the uh, pipe the pipe has changed angle so th let's look at what happens okay okay yeah it does that okay okay so i'm just gonna have to look at what that pipe is doing just to double check is that indeed what's happening yes that is it arcs out it arcs and changes so it bounces and bobs so it's actually on this finger here negative space this joins it like this okay 
like that. Okay, there we go. I'm kind of happy with that. That's a bit of a shitty drawing, but it'll do. Okay, right. So if we look at the timing of that, um, let's see what we got. You see how opening the eyes there make the world of difference to that action? Okay. Can you see that? So what we essentially have is we essentially have um, the, uh, the, the law of arcing. We'll talk about the hands, okay? They're just following a circular arc. If you look at them, they're just going in a circular motion, okay? And we're just making nice circular shapes, okay? So we're following a circular, we're kind of following the circular arc, and then the other hand is coming offset over it, following the circular arc, then the other one is coming like that, following. So this is all just a circular arc. And the same with the pipe. So similar to when we do a spinning around pendulum, it really is that simple, okay? And what you need to understand, what's unifying them, even though I did this carelessly and we can see like the, the length of my hand is longer here, but that actually happens in the original as well. So um, as, he's, as he's emphasizing the shoulder bouncing and shrugging to give the character a lot of um, uh, kind of like staccato movement um, bouncing to counter the head shape, okay, the head bounce, which we'll talk about. In spite of the volumes being a little bit all over the place, the the thing is, is what we're seeing is I want you to look at this triangle shape and I want you to watch what happens to it, okay? As we watch it, we watch it kind of come, it kind of forms, okay? It forms and then it goes, it goes backwards and forwards quickly, but then it kind of, then just slows away into that position. So it's generally quite uniform. It just moves, it just jerks once there, okay? Otherwise the rest of it is quite slowing in and slowing out. So we have the, uh, the law of arcing and slowing in and slowing out. Obviously we've got the law of uh, squash and stretch going on in the nose and the neck and then the head coming down, subtle squash and stretch in the eyes, okay? So the law of arcing Timing in terms of slowing in and slowing out. If we look at the head with the, you know, we've we've kind of come up quick, but then we slow. The head is slowing out. The 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 shoulders are slowing in. Okay, as they come up, they come up quick, but they slow in. Okay, then the head comes down like a bouncing ball, and it's just a continuing bouncing ball. Like in that free. A video in the Facebook group of the bouncing ball we do a basic bouncing ball or kind of going off like that so if you look at the guy's head it really is like a bouncing ball arc traveling away like that you know it's it's a little bit more uh, subtle than that and remember this brings me on to the next law the law of pose to pose straight ahead okay we are using key an extreme animation there are no in-betweens I have drawn no in-betweens I have drawn very few breakdowns these are my keys and my extremes that I have got from the piece and um, what it and what it enables us to see is we can see that the um, the extremes and keys are enough because they are giving us the timing of the slowing in and slowing out points and we're still getting a pretty decent movement even without the in-betweens and that's that's what really great animation is about you know being able to do that so that is the law of pose to pose and the law of straight ahead which is the way you saw me execute this where I kind of worked out those hands straight ahead and did that the slowing in and slowing out on the shoulders we then have the law of squash and stretch of course we talked about the nose and then the neck and then the subtle squash in the eyes as they close and open okay so we look here the eyes are squashed more they become a little more less squashed then they open wide and then they they as just like bouncing balls they open they come down and then they squash okay 
as they hit that down point and come up. So that's the law of squash and stretch. We then have the law of primary and secondary action, which is, of course, what I talked about. All the guy is doing is just taking. If this was a lesser animation, he would have just dropped the pipe and caught it, okay, and then looked at it. He might have just bobbed his head twice, okay, but Milt has him with the secondary action bob his head how many times, okay, one, two, three, four, four head bobs I count, one, two, three, could be three, one, no, there's a little bit up there with the nose, so one, two, three, four, okay, I say four, okay, or three and a half, and he has that many head bobs, and then he has this whole circular thing happening with the catching of the pipe. Law of primary and secondary action. Law of follow through and overlap, of course, is what's happening with the not just the hair, which is bouncing around. It's also the way the hands are not twinning. They are over offset the others. So as they're all following that, they are they are following through and overlapping the action. Okay. With the, with the hands and also the shoulders creating an opposing action to the head. And then as the head goes down, they come up. As the head comes up, they go down. Then they go up, then they go down. So that is a subtle execution of the law of follow through and overlap. We then have the law of exaggeration and appeal, uh, the law of exaggeration. So we talk about how we look at this hand coming in there's no we break the anatomy we break the anatomy with the neck and the hand but then we pull it back so the anatomy is back then we break the anatomy again to shrug those shoulders and then we pull it back then we break the anatomy again to shrug the shoulders and pull it back i've done it quickly milt has done it far better and subtle than me go and look at the real one but you'll see the same thing going on okay so we break, we cheat the anatomy with the law of exaggeration. The law of appeal is how we started all of this stuff with the silhouette of the character before we animated it. We looked at the silhouette, the appealing poses, the shapes, okay? So that is getting, getting maximum appeal, getting the action to read even when we haven't drawn the character inside. The law of appeal is in there. We also have of course, the law of staging. The character is nervous. He's in the scene. He's waiting for his his puppies of his dogs to, to be born. And then he's, he's, he's on edge. So all that happens in the previous scene is the dog just butts his leg or something just to come and, and, and be with him. And he does this with his pipe. So this is staging. This is kind of like giving you a performance it's staging the action so we know the guy's a little bit nervy he's a little bit on edge okay so it's very very important the law of staging so i just want to see if we've missed any of the laws we've done timing we've done staging we've done appeal we've done exaggeration we've done primary and secondary ah yeah we've got solid drawing which i'll talk about in a minute anticipation we missed Follow through and overlap. We got post to post, straight ahead, squash and stretch, arc, slow in and slow out. So anticipation, anticipation. Here we go. Okay. So we've got this pose here. Okay. And then what happens is, is the whole thing afterwards is kind of like he's anticipating his next move. So he's trying to grab this. Okay. And then his head is going down in a take. And then he's trying to come up and he's anticipating again which is what double takes are kind of all about. You go down before you go up, you go up before you go down, and all that kind of thing to anticipate the action. So you've got all those kind of things going on and happening in there, the law of anticipation. Then we have the law of um, solid drawing, which is what I've been talking about, the master shape. Uh, again, as we had the silhouette, we focused on the master shape and... Then we considered the shapes within shapes using uh, the AMB Real Animator Training uh, phrase of the secret science of shape simplification. We literally had um, to talk about uh, how we maintain the volume and size. Even when we cheat it and go off, it still looks kind of consistent, even in this rough state, because of the law of solid drawing, of understanding shapes and how they all fit into the master shape 
and understanding how to simplify anatomy and how to create dimension with these shapes okay so that is the law of solid drawing and i believe did did we miss that one timing staging appeal exaggeration primary secondary solid anticipation follow through overlap pose to pose squash and stretch arc slow in and slow out of course i know all these laws like the back of my hand but often when I'm explaining, I kind of forgot if I covered one. And sometimes I go back to my wallpaper and it reminds me if I missed any as I've been going. So that's actually the review of this particular scene here of the um, 101 Dalmatians breakdown. And I just see that my beautiful wife has added... You know, the stream was beautiful enough as it is, but now it has become 10 times more beautiful as, of course, I'm going to be biased. My beautiful wife, Nino, has come online um, to just say, give me some support there. Uh, thank you, sweetheart. He's pretty amazing, isn't he? And now I realize she's talking about Akal the warrior instead of me. <laughs> there, there you go. Okay, but now... Um, my pleasure life fantasy now it's been a pretty long stream i'm not gonna hang around for too long i'll just read a few of the end comments and have a look at what people are saying about the end result uh will this stay on youtube uh of course it's gonna stay on youtube um this is for my uh loyal subscribers who actually you know, you, there's about a thousand of you in the 5,000. Never focus on numbers, people. Out of 5,000 of you, only a thousand of you actually watch my videos. This is for you, thousand. Thank you. Uh, so this is staying. The long streams are always the best streams. Um, well, thank you for that. I like how his head bounces in his collar. His neck is a spring. Um, Akau the warrior. I just realized how you can go back to your wallpaper. Absolutely. I wouldn't call it a cheat sheet, Gabe. Listen, if you don't know the 12 laws of animation, in my opinion, you've got no business um, helping somebody else understand animation. If you cannot understand, if you cannot explain something to somebody else, um, you're not you do not understand it so never use the word cheat sheet even lightly because the only person you cheat is yourself okay there as i say to many there are 12 12 months in a year just spend one month on one law you'll never feel the need to cheat again the gordon ramsay comparison pops up again he might be a bit tipsy at times but you cannot deny the skill and knowledge he has Okay, Cape, I guess I'll take that as a compliment. Um, mm -mm. I wonder if this is because Ramsey are both Brits. Me and Ramsey are both Brits because I don't see a huge similarity. <laughs> okay, there you are. Thank you, Akau. Akau coming to my rescue. Um, I'm back and I wanted to know. Okay. Right. I don't mind being compared with Gordon Ramsay, actually, because... Gordon Ramsay, for what it is, is a very intelligent man. You know, um, he's built a very successful um, business and he's helped a lot of people. And I guess, you know, um, he's got his way and I've got mine. Okay, bless you being animation, my animation teacher. Um, May, may, maybe AMB is blonde as Ramsey. <laughs> now Richard Mika comes in with his extreme, his, uh, his uh, unique sense of humor. Okay then, people. Thanks a lot for the stream. This is staying up online. It was a lot of fun to do. I'm going to just strive it once more because even though I didn't animate this, I kind of love Milk Carl and I'm kind of satisfying myself with my handiwork of studying that it's off model at times the drawings are weak in places but i'm kind of happy with it considering the time that i did it in so uh i learned a lot from this one too thank you life fantasy thanks a lot for the opportunity and nino is quite right i am hungry okay people see you later bye bye